Good evening. Welcome as we gather in the house of our God to worship him. This weekend, we are observing the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. It is also our church picnic weekend. So our service this evening is kind of like our typical outdoor service, uh, even though this is our indoor service night. That service is printed in the bulletin and up on the screens for you. As we continue our look at the Bible's description of the Christian, we hear tonight from God's Word that the Christian lives as wheat among weeds. And it is a reminder to us to look forward to God's judgment to take care of the weeds. Let us begin our service by singing the first hymn from All That Dwell Below the Skies. Please stand, and we read responsively the call to worship. I rejoice with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. The Lord is near to all who call on him. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Let us pray. O God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your final judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here 
and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. In our first reading, the Lord assures his Old Testament people that even though they are surrounded by evil in this world, that doesn't mean the Lord doesn't care for them or that he will do nothing with evil. A reading from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 6 through 11. This is what the Lord, the King of Israel, says. Israel's Redeemer, the Lord of armies, says, I am the first and I am the last. Except for me, there is no God. For who is like me? Let him declare it. Let him recite in order for me the things that took place since the time I established an ancient people. Or let them declare what is yet to come and what is going to take place. Do not tremble and do not be frightened. Did I not announce this to you and declare it already long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God except me? There is no other rock. I am not aware of any other. All those who form an idol are good for nothing. All the things which delight them provide no benefit. As for their witnesses, they do not see. They know nothing. So they will be ashamed. Who is this who forms a god or casts a metal image, metal image that can provide no profit? Look at him. All his associates will be ashamed. The craftsmen are merely men. Let them all gather themselves and take a stand. They will be terrified and ashamed together. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the psalm of the day is Psalm 19, and we will read selected verses responsively. The heavens tell about the glory of God. The expanse of the sky proclaims the work of his hands. Their voice goes out into all the earth. And their word reaches the end of the world. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy. It gives wisdom to the inexperienced. The precepts of the Lord are right. The commandment of the Lord is bright. It gives light to the eyes. They are more desirable than gold. Even better than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey. Even honey dripping from the honeycomb. May the speech from my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be pleasing to you. The Apostle Paul tells us that God's wrath is being revealed even though we don't necessarily visibly see it right now. But the Lord is handing over to their sinful desires those who despise Him so that they have no excuse in the judgment. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Indeed, God's wrath is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who try to suppress the truth by unrighteousness. This happens because what can be known about God is evident among them, because God made it evident among them. In fact, his invisible characteristics, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world because they are understood from the things he made. As a result, people are without excuse. 
because even though they knew God, they did not honor him or give him thanks as God. Instead, their thinking became nonsense, and their senseless, hearts was, uh, their senseless heart was darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they have become fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human or like birds, four-footed animals, and crawling things. So as they followed their sinful desires of their hearts, God handed them over to the impurity of degrading their own bodies among themselves. Such people have traded the truth about God for the lie, worshiping and serving the creation rather than the Creator, who is worthy of praise forever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Please stand. Alleluia. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. We read tonight verses 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. This reading will serve as the basis for tonight's sermon. He presented another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who so <coughs> excuse me. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while people were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the plants sprouted and produced heads of grain, the weeds also appeared. The servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? He said to them, An enemy did this. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and gather up the weeds? No, he answered, because when you gather up the weeds, you might pull up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first gather up the weeds, bind them in bundles, and burn them, and then gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus sent the people away and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered them, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are angels. Therefore, just as the weeds are gathered up and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will pull out of His kingdom everything that causes sin and those who continue to break the law. The angels will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We now sing the hymn of the day, Come, you thankful people, come.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. What do you think really frustrates Christians? Here's my answer. When they see something wrong, at a potluck you go up to the dessert table and there's nothing left. You're practically screaming, hey, that's not fair, right? But it's even more frustrating for Christians when they see all the evil around them. The violence, the cheating, the hatred, the selfishness, the mean and judgmental words. The question posed to you this evening is, How do you respond to all the evil around you? Sometimes Christians look at the evil around them and wonder, is God seeing this? And if he is, why isn't he doing anything about it? One thing Jesus' parable of the weeds tells us or teaches us is that God does see all the evil in this world and he has a plan for it. This parable also teaches us how we are to deal with it. This is how we know God is fully aware of the evil in this world. With this parable, Jesus affirms There are weeds among my wheat. With that thought, we are going to look at what Jesus teaches about how we, the wheat, deal with the weeds. And we hear Jesus giving us two big don'ts. Here's the first one. Don't be fooled by who planted them. Matthew chapter 13 records a series of parables Jesus told, each one building on the truths of the previous ones. Last weekend we heard the parable of the sower, in which Jesus taught how people become believers and produce for God. They are planted by God's Word. He follows that up with today's parable of weeds among wheat. The concept of sowing seeds is the same here. But Jesus adds where evil unbelievers come from and what God does about them. The term that Jesus used in this parable for weeds is quite interesting. They are specific weeds, technically known as darnel or terrors. They are weeds that look like wheat. The only way you can tell the difference between them is when their heads sprout. Wheat has that nice golden head of grain 
But terrors have this darkened head, which, by the way, can be poisonous. Jesus once stated, by their fruit you will recognize them. Quite often we see people around us and even among us here in the visible church, they look like us, sound like us, and even live pretty much like us, but we can identify unbelievers by what they produce in their lives. Wicked, poisonous words and works, a total disregard for the teachings and truths of God's Word. Don't be fooled by who planted them. Some teach that God from eternity chose those who are going to be saved and those who won't. A teaching known as double predestination. Now take that teaching to its logical conclusion. It's really blaming the God who wants all people to be saved for planting unbelievers in this world. What a terrible teaching! Instead, Jesus teaches the enemy who sowed them is the devil. Yes, my friends, the devil is real. Yes, he works hard to keep those unbelievers unbelievers. But he is also working hard using his weeds to confuse, interrupt, and hinder the work of Christ's church here on this earth and the lives of believers. Now, I know it's agriculturally impossible for wheat to become weeds. But it is a spiritual reality that happens when believers look at the lives of unbelievers and conclude they are wealthier. They're having more fun. They fall into a pile of poop and seem to come out smelling like a rose every time. That is the attitude of impatience. Impatience with our faith. And who's stoking that attitude in you? The devil is. That's his voice urging you to admit how bad you got it, how better unbelievers have it, because he wants you to be one of his weeds. But notice how Jesus ends this parable. The harvest of judgment is coming with a fiery result for weeds, for unbelievers. Heed that warning. Avoid that judgment. Instead, Jesus wants you to look at who you are. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. Notice the emphasis on God's grace that Jesus highlights with this designation. Even though we sinners don't deserve it in the least, even though we are naturally born weeds who deserve to be thrown into the eternal fiery furnace, God does in His grace does not just make us subjects of His kingdom, no, He graciously makes us His children and heirs of His kingdom of glory. And Jesus wants you to look at who made you sons of the kingdom. The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. How meaningful that title should be for you. It means that God's own Son came down to this earth and became a true man to serve you, to step in for you, to live a perfect life for you, to suffer the punishment for your sins on the cross, 
to give lasting peace to you and to open the barn doors of heaven for you. Keep looking at your Savior as the reason God forgives you, calls you His child, and will have you shine like the sun in His eternal kingdom. Indeed, by faith in Christ, you are eternally far better off than unbelievers. But there is another don't that Jesus teaches with this parable of weeds among his wheat. Don't prematurely pull them up. And that reflects this part of Jesus' parable. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and gather up the weeds? No, he answered, because when you gather up the weeds, you might pull up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. Sad to say, the church on earth hasn't always heeded Jesus' words here. History buffs may recall something called the Inquisition. When the church tortured and even burned at the stake those who were not following the church's teachings. In the process, they even killed those who were following the Bible's teaching when the teaching of the church was going astray. They prematurely pulled up wheat. And yes, indeed, what a terrible mark in the church's history. Do you heed Jesus' words? Now, our plan may be, if we can identify unbelievers by their fruits, and if we know that the devil has planted them here to harass Christians and Christ's church, why don't we use force to get them to stop harassing us, to take them out, so that our lives will be so much easier here. Sounds like a good plan, right? But let me turn a statement that I said earlier. I know that it's agriculturally impossible for weeds to become wheat. But again, it is a spiritual reality. Who knows? Right? Can you and I look into the heart of a present unbeliever and know for sure that God's powerful Word will never crush that one stubborn unbelief and cause faith in Jesus to sprout and grow? You know, our so-called good plan is again one of impatience. Impatience that may lead us to break the fifth commandment, you shall not murder. Impatience, not with your faith here, but impatience with the plan. God's plan. So what's God's plan? Jesus revealed it in the last part of this parable. At harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first gather up the weeds, bind them in bundles, and burn them. Then gather the wheat into my barn. And Jesus' explanation is clear enough. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are angels. Therefore, just as the weeds are gathered up and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will pull, pull out of His kingdom everything that causes sin. And those who continue to break the law, the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. 
What that tells us, first of all, is this. Lifetime on this earth is still God's time of grace for people. Even for unbelievers. Just like it is for you and me. Our Lord's command for His believers is not go and pull them up, but rather go and preach the Gospel. Just as the Gospel was God's power to call you and me out of our natural unbelief to faith, it is still the pow- that power for unbelievers too. That's how we deal with evil unbelievers among us. We share the Gospel with them. We tell them how God did something about evil in this world. He sent His own Son to rescue us and all people from it. What Jesus also teaches us with this parable is this. In Christ... Wait patiently. Judgment day is coming. That will be the Lord's time to take care of those who stubbornly refuse His grace through Jesus. The angel harvesters will gather them up and those wretches will come to a wretched end. In Christ, wait patiently. Judgment Day is coming when by faith in Jesus you will be declared righteous and the Lord will bring you into that life of eternal glory where you will no longer be harassed by evil. Where you will... where the devil will be able to tempt you no more where you will have a much easier life forever. Jesus concludes, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. The Christian hears and learns what Jesus is teaching with this parable of weeds among the wheat. Hear Him tell you. Don't think that unbelievers have it better than you. Instead, look at Me, your Savior. What I have done for you and what I am preparing for you. And hear Him tell you. Don't prematurely and impatiently pull up unbelievers from this world. Instead, Patiently wait for my time and my judgment. You know, Jesus is urging you to remain in God's Word and to keep sharing God's Word. That's how you deal with weeds. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us now confess our faith in Him using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please be seated. We will now give our thank offerings to the Lord. Please stand. We will now pray responsibly the prayer of the church that is printed in the bulletin and up on the screens. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Spare us, Lord, from the lies of the devil and the attacks of our conscience. Comfort and save us in your patient compassion. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Guide us, Lord, to the wisdom of your word and the power of your promises. Take away our confusion and doubt. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Hear us, Lord, when we come to you in prayer. Make us confident to take you at your word and to follow you in faith. Empower us, Lord, to walk in your ways and live in your truth. Fill us with your love that we may love you and one another. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Almighty God, by your Spirit, the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Receive our prayers for all members of your holy church that in their vocations and ministries they may truly serve and honor you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Please be seated. We will close by singing the hymn, Rise My Soul to Watch and Pray.
Once again, good evening to all of you. Um, if you look at your watches, you see that I ended early just so that you could get out and get in your cars and go home before the rain hits. Hope you appreciate that. Um, really not much out of the ordinary is going on this week. I'm just going to mention that next weekend we will be observing the ninth Sunday after Pentecost and continue the characteristics of a Christian. The Christian seeks spiritual wealth. Um, one thing I, I do want to highlight for you is that the event group has planned another event uh, now in August. Saturday, August 12th, there will be a scavenger hunt. Please uh, check out the table in the hallway for more details, and we encourage you to sign up for that fun event. Um, another thing that I need to point out to you is this. On Thursday evening, Pastor Rich received a call to serve as pastor at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in, uh, I hope I say this right, uh, S Salina, Kansas. Um, I know that he would appreciate uh, your comments as he deliberates the call as well as your prayers for him and his family. Uh, I wish you could um, uh, maybe do that immediately. However, the reason I'm up here tonight is that on Wednesday he tested positive for COVID again. So, I'm filling in here. He should be back in the office early uh, this coming week, either Monday or Tuesday. But again, keep him in your prayers as he deliberates the call. Uh, and finally, check your bulletins and the, uh, our website for other announcements of what's coming up. Have a blessed week, everyone.